Hi everyone, welcome back to my shop. Um, most of you who've seen my other videos know that I'd like to start my videos off with kind of an off topic type thing, um, usually an airplane or something. But today I'm gonna to do a little whining. <laughs> Our local hobby shop here in my area uh, finally closed. And uh, I've worked with the guy for a long time, Rogers his name. Um, we, I guess, we go way back. We're talking late 70s. Uh, we worked together at another hobby shop and he kept on with the hobby shop deal and opened up his home after the hobby shop we worked for closed. And he's been operating for a long time and it was, he felt it was time for him to retire. So uh, anyway, I went there for one last time visit his shop and pick up some things segment and he had some uh, crash videos I love watching those they're a lot of fun and a few uh, event videos and pick those up but the coolest thing I picked up <clears throat> excuse me is this right here this is a vintage top flight prop rack he sold it to me for real cheap uh, i just been going around my shop and as I find propellers laying around, I'm slapping them on here. And these are just the propellers I had laying on shelves uh, underneath the bench, <laughs> just scattered everywhere. So I'm, I'm starting to get organized with it. But it has a place to hang it on the pegboard or to sit like this on the on a desk. It's kind of rickety, but it, it's old. So I thought that was pretty cool. Last time I seen one of these is when I worked at a hobby shop in, oh goodness, mid 70s. And uh, yeah, it's, they haven't, I haven't seen one of these in forever. But uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, now, getting back to topic the P40 from Phoenix. Um, you see me do the unboxing video, and you might see the flight video, uh, the maiden flight video. The, the Phoenix P40 flew quite well. I was pretty happy with it. Only thing I didn't like was how it was put, to, you know, how it was built internally, the structure and thing. But uh, other than that, it flew quite well. And the reason I'm doing uh, the new P40 is because I wrecked the old one. <laughs> it was one of those things where. I had some kind of a failure in, internally in the plane. Uh, let me just kind of describe it. I was on a two degree dive, approximately two degree dive to the field. I was going to do a high speed low pass. And when I got to the point where I wanted to level out, which is about four foot, five foot, somewhere in there, I had no elevator response. And the thing just continued on down and did a skip number on the ground, bounced back up in the air after it ripped the firewall out and the engine was dangling. And this thing, it stayed in a glide for another 50 yards before it finally settled down in the weeds. But it belly landed pretty nice. And the only thing it really did was scuff up the bottom, tore up the belly pan, wrecked the cowling, ripped the firewall up. Nothing serious. Um, actually quite easy to fix. Most of it is fixed. But um, I'm going to show you that. And then I'll go into uh, compar comparing the new to the old uh, start with the box and uh, I'm not going to show you anything about taking the parts out of the box because I, I think that's a waste of time uh, I can tell you right now that everything in the box was very well wrapped everything was taped down to a point where nothing would shake in the box when I, when I gave it a shake usually here's something rattling around there was nothing rattling around they had it well packed uh, I'll show you uh, comparison of the old versus new um, on, on some of the parts uh, I'll describe it the best I can what parts are what and where they go and uh, we'll see how it turns out so give me a minute to get organized watch the intro and I'll be back
let's get started here. This is the first generation P40. This is the one that bit the dust. Uh, you can see that chunks are missing out of it underneath here and uh, took the engine off, of course. But uh, yeah, this is, this is it. So what I wanted to, to point out and to let you visualize first is the way the plane works. This is, <laughs> let me get this out of the way. These are the parts that got wiped out. And I put them in a bag. I take as many parts as I can, like the formers and stuff, and I'll glue them all back together. And then I'll use them as templates to make the new parts. But that's what's in the bag. Okay. Uh, let's take a look first down here at this uh, wing root. It, where the fuselage is. Um, you, you can see the the wing tube down here. That is a cardboard. Um, there's lightning holes down the side. Um, just kind of keep that in your mind when we go on to the, the new version. Um, underneath here, now you can see this edge here. Um, keep that in your mind and what it looks like along with the undersides okay because this is all going to look different on the on the new version uh, there's gonna be a lot of changes that I'll point out as we go the construction on the old version let me stand up here you see the the guts here is a little bit heavier built than than the new one um, as far as lightning holes and things like that you'll be able to see that more readily when I get the new fuselage out uh, let me show you the damage this is this is the part I like talking about <laughs> um, when I belly landed this whole edge here was wiped out down to this piece of balsa it knocked all the formers out uh, this piece of plywood here was snapped in half you can see that it's missing a chunk up front here uh, but the basic box where the engine mounts was intact it just broke away from uh, the fuselage and you can see I'll put it up here and try to point it to you point it out to you is it snapped the plywood right here down here and up here and that's on both sides the same place and when it did this front piece from here forward was broke loose from the main fuselage so the only thing that was really holding it on was a little bit of plywood left on the sides um, so it was very easy to just grab the nose jack it back up into place and just kind of touch it with CA until it was back in place. Glued the ply or the balsa wood skins back on to the firewall mount. And uh, it was broke up here too, by the way, on both sides. But that's been pretty much repaired. And what I'm gonna do is just laminate plywood over top of the broken areas, a sheet of plywood, and reinforce everything. And it'll be a flyable unit when I get done with it. Uh, the wings didn't hurt the wings a bit the wings are sitting back over here I got one hole in the bottom of the wing where when the prop broke it went up into the wing on the bottom put a slice in it other than that no, no damage to the wing no damage to the tail wheel the the tail surfaces are all intact but from the belly pan portion forward was wiped out nothing in the back was hurt okay so uh, this unit has air retracts. I think I shown you showed you that before, but the air tank is up inside here. Air valve is here. Uh, let's see. Well, there's not much else to tell you. Hard rod going to the elevators. Pull pull to the rudder and the tail wheel. Um, let's see. What else can I tell you about this? Uh, not a whole lot. 
So I'm going to get this out of the way and I'll bring out the new one and we'll start our comparison. This is the new fuselage. As you can tell, it's not broke. <laughs> um, right off the bat, I can tell you that the, the covering material is nice and tight. The, the woodwork underneath is not so great. Uh, there's a little whoop-de-doo down here and right here. Uh, there's something going on right here. I'm not sure what that is. But overall, not too bad for an ARF. There's some spots on the other side. I don't know if I'll be able to show you or not right here where they botched the covering job and left a crease right there. Um, other than that, not too bad. One thing I can show you right off the bat is that there used to be tape going around here holding this all down. And I don't know if that's tape or not that's on here, but it now matches. Um, just for instance, let me bring this up so you can see it. This is the old one. You can see the green doesn't match. They got this funky tape on there to, to hold it down or to get rid of the seam. Nasty looking. But they improved it quite a bit. Uh, the covering all matches, which I think is pretty good. That helps a lot. I don't know if you notice, but this back window right here is different. Uh, this is an insect uh, piece of plastic. Um, I don't know what's going on right here, but it is all scratched up on the covering right here. It might be glue. I don't know. I have to check that out. Um, but not bad. Pilot still the same. Um, actually, the pilot has been moved back into the seat a lot further, so it looks different, but it's not. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you here? Oh, one thing for sure is that this hatch is not the same length as the new hatch. If you take a look here, it's lined up at the front and lined up at the back and you can see that the new one is longer. Okay, and uh, you can this whole canopy is one piece on here. It's plastic all the way up and around. It's one great big glob that they stuck on there uh, in the shape of a P40. And the new one is two pieces, actually three. You got both glass, plastic glasses on the side, and this part of the main canopy is uh, is a separate piece. It gives it that sliding canopy look, except for there's no uh, seam right here for for the sliding part. No big deal, sport model. What can you do? Uh, now, for the new stuff, remember what it looked like. This all was gray on the other one, okay? And it was painted. Now, it is the same plywood, but it is laminated with carbon fiber, which is not bad. Um, I like that idea, brings a little strength to it. I don't think, um, from what I've seen after the impact, the old front box, there was nothing wrong with the structure of it. That, needed to be uh, changed but they did and they put a lightning hole down here which I don't care for and the top hatch is all cut out with the lightning hole and the old hatch had lightning holes also but it's a lot beefier I bet you this is a lot stronger than this I might end up swapping them out uh, just because I know this is better. And with the gas engine, the more holes you got, the more residual uh, exhaust and oil will get inside your plane, and, and you really don't want that. Uh, the best thing to do is to cover up the lightning holes around the engine compartment, because it's just not good. If you're flying electric, well, that's a different story altogether. Um, you need the ventilation, so that might be better for the electric guys. Uh, inside of this 
hatch area, this whole box on the inside, you can't see it, but I'll tell you about it. It is all laminated with the carbon fiber, and this carbon fiber is only, I don't even think it's a 64th of an inch thick. It's very, very thin, but it's on the outside and on the inside. Uh, underneath, you can see it looks like a piece of Swiss cheese. Uh, what I plan on doing is covering up these lightning holes here with a piece of plywood on the inside of the fuselage and covering this up right here with a piece of plywood covering all these up also. Because um, my biggest thing is oil seepage. I And this kind of thing is to me uh, a downgrade as far as uh, the way it's assembled. It needs, for me, this is where my exhaust is gonna be. So any exhaust that don't make it out through this little vent is gonna go inside my airplane and I don't want that. So it's all gonna be sealed off. Something to consider when you put yours together if you get one. Uh, let me see. Now remember I said look at the wing root right here very closely. Well, look at this one. Tons more holes. That means it is a, a quite a bit weaker. Um, on the inside, I will be laminating wood over the top of all of this stuff to strengthen this up. Um, it won't add much weight to it. You're, you're probably thinking, yeah, you're going to do all this and it's going to weigh a ton. Well, to be honest with you, it's not going to add that much weight to it. I have a a Hawker Hurricane which is the same basic same dimensions as this and but and it's all fiberglass okay the fuselage is fiberglass uh, the wings are all sheeted there's no uh, exposed ribs you know so you don't see the ribs on the wings uh, and it weighs about 19 pounds and it flies on a 26 and it flies well at very scale and this model is only supposed to get up to 17 pounds which to me is on just about right at 17 pounds that's the high end the box says okay but for me 17 pounds would be the perfect flying weight it will handle more wind it will uh, it will be more stable in a crosswind you won't get that shuddering effect like the original p40 um i would say in winds over 10 miles an hour it was bouncy and it was like flying a helium balloon okay in the wind so i like them a little heavier and that won't you know adding all the ball supply into this is not going to add enough weight to uh to hurt anything and another thing is that the original uh, since we're talking about weight with the, the original no matter where I shifted the radio and I had the DLE on the front and everything was on the plane it was still tail heavy and I ended up having to put this much lead in the nose this is about oh a pound and a half maybe almost two and uh, yeah that was up in here to balance the plane so a little weight is not gonna hurt nothing. Um, I'd rather have functional weight that was going that's going to strengthen the plane than to add something like this. Okay. Um, but we'll see how this one fares out. I could mount everything in it, and it could balance perfectly when I'm done. I don't know yet, so we'll we'll see. Uh, let's go to the inside. Enough chatter about construction on the outside. Okay, remember I said to look at the construction of the cockpit area, okay? Everything is laminated with carbon fiber around the edges. Um, up inside here, now these are all full of holes. It's, it, they lighten it up a lot, which is not, wasn't really necessary at all. The front part, they used a foam uh, sheeting of some kind to make the front part of the canopy hatch um, you can see that they cut away a whole bunch of 
area that the former had and laminated it with carbon fiber. Uh, I don't know if they laminated on both sides. Let me see. No, they did not laminate it on both sides from what I can see. Uh, the stringers down here, they are laminated on both sides, which is okay. These formers, which are thinner, are laminated on both sides. This cutout is much larger than it used to be, and it's not laminated at all, except for up in here, where the antenna comes through. They have a plywood block now, and looks like a plastic insert into that, covered with carbon fiber. And that is just about it as far as the cockpit area goes. And like I said before, the glasses has been changed. I'm going to set these side by side so you can look at them real quick and you can see the difference between the two. Okay. Uh, now look at this back end and compare it with the old one. Try to get a grip on here so I don't drop them. Okay. A little more beef to, to the old one and the new one. And uh, just feeling the weight, the old one's heavier by far. And to me, the weight means that it's uh, a little more sturdy. And when I move this like this, I'm hearing a creaking sound. It might be coming from the, the canopy, but it still means it's moving. It's warping just by a little bit of movement. So not impressed. The old one, I'm getting zero movement on this one. So the old hatch is better, in my opinion. Okay, let's look at the inside. Again, it looks like Swiss cheese. Uh, lightning holes on the top rail where there was none on the original. On the side rail, there's a bunch of lightning holes. It's all covered with carbon fiber. Uh, fuselage sides are that foam sheet board or whatever it is that uh, that they use. The top now is a hollowed out piece of styrofoam. Uh, basically I have to say it's been downgraded in that respect because I prefer balsa. All the side running uh, plywood runners on the side, they're all full of lightning holes. You can see them here. Servo tray has extra lightning holes. Uh, that neither here nor there as far as the servo tray goes as long as it doesn't flex the formers are a lot more skimpy but they're covered both sides with carbon fiber and this down here i'm not really sure what goes there more than likely the control box for the retracts i would imagine goes down there um has a composite type might be just plastic uh wing tube compared to the the cardboard one that I showed you in the original. Um, the whole front end is nothing but holes in that platform. When this was a solid flat piece up through here, which kept everything intact. So more than likely, I'm going to do the same thing again. With this, I'm going to laminate plywood on here, plant laminate plywood on the inside, because these are all notched out. And the only thing that's covering it all up is the carbon fiber uh, down below it's made the same way as the the original as far as the belly pan goes this is balsa the stringers are laid in there and uh, those are just regular stringers with carbon fiber on them all three of them the formers themselves are a lot lighter but they have carbon fiber on both sides so whether there's the, they gain any strength I really don't know but I very much doubt it um, but there's carbon fiber all the way back I don't know if you can see all the way back inside all the formers have carbon fiber all the the spars 
and stringers have carbon fiber the sides like I said that's that foam board um, yeah they went cheap on this baby as far as that goes um, okay let's flip it over okay let's see if it'll sit let me move some of these things out of the way Underneath here, this is all carbon fiber. This is the area that was ripped out on my plane, on the original. This used to be balsa wood. Now it is a foam board in there. Um, I'll probably end up putting finishing epoxy on the whole thing. Otherwise, it'll start to absorb oil. So that has to be done. Let me show you from the front, uh, right up in here. That is a foam board inside. Okay. Slide it this way the best I can. Make sure it don't tip. I'm gonna untape this back hatch. And get this masking tape off of here. It's being uncooperative, give me a moment. There we go. Now, what we have back here is the hatch for the rear retract, okay? Um, the doors are plastic. The hinges are pins. Not glued in, of course, until you get ready to uh, set everything up. The actuators for the, ha the doors, I think they're kind of some kind of a spring system. I'm not really sure what kind. It's held in in the front with uh, plastic pegs. Not very well done, I might add, uh, cosmetically. It has carbon fiber on the edges, on the formers. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you about it? Um, this part here is sheeted with balsa. That is just about all I can tell you about that hatch. Oh, it's held down by the two front dowels and two screws that go in here. So when they slide that in, it's no longer a, a latch holding it in. You slide it in like that and you run the two screws down in here and it holds it in place. Inside, we have Let's see, multiple layers of plywood in here. They have carbon fiber on, on both sides, it looks like. Carbon fiber across the top. There's a blind nut here for the retract uh, to hold, for the screw hold downs. Um, the top here has carbon fiber over the plywood. The sides are plied wood with uh, carbon fiber. Like I said before, the stringers are covered with uh, carbon fiber. The formers, front and back, carbon fiber. All the way down to the top of the vertical stabilizer. Now the vertical stabilizer is nothing special. It's the old construction. From what I can see, it's just balsa wood. And take a look. Um, it's, it's really not a whole lot going on in there. They did change this. This is where your uh, horn goes for your rudder. So they put an indentation here for it. Not much else to tell you about the fuselage. Let me uh, stick the hatch back on. That way I won't lose it or misplace it. Put the masking tape back on, hold it on there. Okay, let me move this out of the way and I'll bring the wings onto the table. Let's get started by looking at the old wing. This is the generation one wing. Uh, it's a basic structure, I guess you could say. It's sheeted balsa with a opening here over the ribs 
sheeted back here in the center section. Same with the bottom side. Uh, air retracts, you can see they're kind of wobbly. Uh, take note of how the airline connects and how the flaps work. But other than that, there's not much else to look at except for the wing root here. I'm just going to shove these on the, to the inside if I can so you can get a cleaner look at it. One more wire. Okay. The way these mount is you have the tube it slides on. This tube is some kind of a composite, I believe. It feels like it at least. Uh, it might be just cardboard with some something on the inside, but Oh, a little epoxy, I guess, right here. But it's a cardboard tube. Um, lightning hole in the front. One here, one here. This is what holds your wing in place. That piece of metal. It slide When you slide it into the fuselage, there's two hex screws that will slide in here. You tighten those hex screws down, and uh, they lock the wing in place. That is really pretty much all there is to say about this. Uh, this is a piece of fiberglass you have to cut out for your your strut and you use screws to put it down um, that is pretty much all there is to say about that okay so keep this in mind what you're what you're looking at aileron hookup uh, things like that okay all right let me get the new wing and uh, we'll do a little comparing. All right, wings for the Generation 2. Uh, basically the same on top. Sheeting on the leading edge, center section, trailing edge. Uh, open framework on the ailerons, open framework down the center of the ribs. Same with the bottom. Uh, Everything's pretty much the same as far as the aileron and the flaps. They're pin hinges. They're not glued in yet. I don't know if I can get them to pop out. Yep. Uh, the way that the flaps work is that the servo sits inside and that uh, and the control rods run out through here and connect. Uh, I would imagine right about in here somewhere to the flap. So there's no control horn showing. The ailerons, they've changed the way that works. There are no more horns sticking out of the bottom of the, of the aileron. And let me show you that. Okay. The hatch, nothing special about the hatch. I don't know if you can see it or not but the servo mounting tray is on an angle like this okay if i put the pencil against it you can see how much of an angle there is okay when you slide your servo in there you mount it and your drill will be sitting off on an angle like that uh, the linkage goes inside now and comes out right here there's, an, there's a little spot right here. You can barely see it. Let me get towards the middle of the frame here. But right here. And the horn is a short horn that goes on the bottom. So basically the rods are running inside the, the wing now, which I like a lot better. It's more scale-like. Uh, the same with the flap is on the opposite angle, like this. Okay and you screw your servo in on an angle something like that push rod goes underneath inside just like before nothing different there on the end of the wing you can see there's a few different changes here you have carbon fiber laminating the, the plywood uh, root section which is on this particular wing is a laminated plywood uh, wing root 
covered with carbon fiber. Uh, the wing tube is now a plastic or a composite, I'm not sure which. And way up inside, and you can't really see it, but I can see it, where the retracts go, right here, okay? The ribs on either side have carbon fiber on them. Uh, I can't see how exactly how far it goes. Uh, carbon fiber looks like it runs back to about here on the ribs coming back from what I can see. That was the only changes that I can see on the wings. Um, they're good and strong. There's no difference really than between this and the the original wings as far as construction goes besides the carbon fiber and it looks a little beefier up in here where the retract sits carbon fiber laminated on the inside wing root uh, that's about really all there is besides the way the servos mount and the control horns run on the in or the control rods run on the inside of the aileron stick this back on here uh, that was pretty quick for the wing so I'll get these out of the way and we'll move on to let's see um, rudder horizontal stabilizer wheel wells hardware I'm gonna bring all that onto the table and we'll go through all that real quick let's start with the rudder uh, the rudder has pin hinges I like pin hinges um, they're not glued in of course you have to do that yourself you may want to refer back to one of my Cougar videos, I don't know which one it was now when I talked about pin hinges and how I install them, but you might want to refer to that. The construction is open framework in the center, um, still pretty sturdy, no wrinkles, not a whole lot to say about that. The covering job is okay, and uh, that's that. <clears throat> Horizontal, st or, yeah, horizontal stab stabilizer, <laughs> I can't even talk now. Horizontal stabilizer, an elevator. Covering's good and tight, open framework, just as before, open framework on the elevators. CA hinges, uh, you're probably gonna go, oh no, he's gonna go off on CA hinges. If you watch my other videos, you'll know why. Uh, but I did use CA hinges on my first P40, generation one. And they're starting to look fatigued in the center uh, so those are going to be cut out and replaced but I'll probably use them on the second generation P40 just to uh, get it up going in the air and when they start to fatigue I'll replace them as I go not a whole lot to say about that um, let's see well, I'll fix that later <laughs> take those off to install the horizontal stabilizer into the fuselages like any other are uh, you cut out the covering material in the center and slide it in use your CA glue to to, to uh, made it to the fuselage um, after you do your measuring make sure it's square I like using epoxy because it gives me more time to get everything squared up uh, and less chance of a glue run that kind of thing and if you do use the long set epoxy I recommend the, uh, the longest set like 30 minute it gives you time to wipe it up with some denatured alcohol and clean it all up real nice and the epoxy will seal the crack versus the CA you might not get a, uh, a gap fill that's going to be satisfactory so uh, personal personal options you can do it either way whatever you like to do that's all there is for that uh, let's start with uh, the wheel wells as far as extra add-on parts wheel wells are either an ABS or a styrene plastic I'm not sure which you need to cut them out of the the flat here and glue them onto the bottom of your wing and when you do that, when you cut out the hole for the wheel wells, uh, try to do a good job with it and salvage as much of the material as you can. 
Uh, you may need it in the future for patching. I have no idea what kind of covering this is, so uh, having that extra piece is helpful. And on my original P40, I knocked the stab off. I talked about that before, but uh, if it wasn't for this material right here, I would not have been able to recover the part on the, well, it was the vertical stab and the horizontal stab that broke loose. I wouldn't be able to, to have patched it and make it look good without having that extra stuff. So it's good to save as much of the covering material as you can when you cut it out. Uh, but that is really all there is to the wheel wells. You can use CA glue to hold it down or epoxy or anything like that I would imagine would hold it down real good. Um, comes with a spinner. It's just a plastic spinner. It has hardware with it. The screws to hold the two halves together. Inserts for the different size engines. Nothing special about that except that it's bigger than the old 60s and 40 sizes. All right, underneath the wing. Remember that fiberglass part under the wing? Well, this is that part without the cutout. What I was thinking about doing with this is cutting gear, gear, cutting gear doors out of it to match the tail section. So I would have working gear doors on the main retracts, like on the full scale P40. Um, but that's something to think about if you want to try that. There's two of them. One I left in the in the foam. Uh, I just used the Dremel tool with a cutting wheel and cut out the the strut opening, and that's about it for that. Uh, same way of holding it down. It comes with a pack of screws, which is laying around here somewhere, probably over there somewhere. I'll show you those in a second. But uh, they're made out of fiberglass, pretty heavy duty. They survived a belly landing, so I know they're pretty good. All right, um, drop tank. This is made out of, I have no idea what. It feels like some kind of a foam or something. There are screws that come with it. The screws go from inside the fuselage down through the bottom into these blind nuts inside of the drop tank. I didn't use this on mine. It adds, to me, it adds too much drag. And if you do belly land, this is gonna cause a lot more damage. All right, let's see. Push rods, there's three of them. One for the rudder and one for each side of the elevator. On the original version one, it was pull pole system, but now it is uh, hardware. They work really well. I have no problems with that at all. Okay, let's go on to what's inside the cowl. The cowling comes stuffed with all your hardware, so I'm using it as a bucket. <laughs> has a tank a nice tank 500 cc uh, the cap is screwed on you can see that on the inside there's fuel line tubing in the front with a piece of brass tubing in the middle and a little bit more of fuel line in the clunk um, the clunk is pretty heavy so it flops down really well on this side you have an over uh, have a fill this side's the overflow and they're all fittings are on there nice and tight. Pretty nice tank for 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 this plane. Much better than the original had. Uh, same size tank, but a little better setup. Let me dig deep in here. Let me pull out everything. Get this out of the way. Uh, we'll start with this bag. It has these Velcro straps, okay? These Velcro straps are for you guys who want to go electric. They have four of them in there to hold down your batteries. That's what these straps are for. 
Okay. <clears throat> wheels. Same wheels as before. They're very light. The only difference that I could find is that the center hub on generation one was white. These are gray. Not much to it as far as that goes. Uh, same tire, smooth, no tread. Okay. Firewall stuff. This is a piece of fiberglass or composite sheet. I would imagine it's for electrics. These are drill templates. This one is for the DLE35 and the other side is for the OS33. And it just shows you where to make your drill marks and has centering marks so you can center it onto the firewall and drill your holes. And there's more templates here. Uh, I would imagine these are for electrics. Well, maybe these are shims because there's so many of them. But uh, these are definitely for an electric setup. This is how you balance the plane. If you remember on the wing, it had that little metal strip that stuck out that you run the two hex screws through inside the fuselage. Well, those metal bars slide through these slots on this plastic, or on plastic, on this plywood. Okay, and uh, up top here, you'll have a little screw that goes into the top, and there's one for each side. When you slide them on, there's a string here that you loop onto the screws through this handle, and you put the wings all on there with these templates, and you pick it up by that handle, and it should balance it will if it don't then you're going to be off a little bit but it does work well i used it on the original so i'll use it again and it has the cg is marked underneath i don't know if you can see that but the cg is marked right there that's where the screw goes in to uh hold this hold the string but it worked good mine was balanced real well to a point where after i smucked it it floated for another 50 yards without any controls. So, yeah, I'm going to use that again. Okay, that takes care of that bag. This bag has all the small hardware in it. Let's see if I can run through this without uh, making a mistake. Now, on the new P40, which they didn't have these on the old P40, these are thumb screws that go inside the fuselage out through the side and into the wings one in the front one in the rear that screw down and hold it up, tight up against the fuselage and in the center it still has these things right here because I don't know if you noticed or not those metal tabs were not installed on the wing but they do provide them they're purple now I guess you could say the purple color is an upgrade, <laughs> but you have to install them yourself. And there's uh, two holes in the bottom of the wing where you put the two uh, mounting screws in there. And like I said, they slide into the fuselage once they're mounted to your wing and the two hex bolts lock it down. And it has the screws, the washers, all the goodies to attach it. And like I said before, thumb screws hold the wing on, a new deal that they have. Uh, this bag contains, uh, looks like control horns for the elevator and rudder, um, ball links, that kind of thing, all the hardware to install the horns. And there should be another one. I think this is the rudder. No, this is the ailerons. So that goes to the ailerons. And this is probably the the flaps or the rudder, I'm not sure which, but these are all the control horns and ball links that attach your control rods to the surfaces. Now this goes to the motor mount. Let's see if I can get this uncooperative bag to open. 
Okay. On a DLE35, these screw all the way, you push the screws through the mount on the engine, then they go into the standoffs here. They used to be silver, now they're purple. Yep, purple, the definite upgrade. <laughs> That's that, and there's two more screws, and there's two smaller ones here. I'm not too sure what the smaller screws go onto. I looked it up and really couldn't find them in the manual. So I'm not too sure what that's for. It could be for standoffs for a uh, electric, perhaps. And another bag that goes with the the engine standoffs is this bag here, which has um, additional standoffs for the gas engine and extra standoffs for electrics blind nuts that go behind the firewall so when you screw your bolt in there it sucks them up tight um, washers different size washers for them uh, let's see that's really all there is there lock nut or lock washers and flat washers this bag is the control rods for the ailerons are the long ones and the short ones I believe are Let's see, no, my mistake. The long ones are for the flaps, the short ones are for the ailerons. There's two of each. This is pull-pull cable hardware. And springs for the tailwheel doors. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some 90 degree uh, fasteners that go on the gear doors. I'm not really sure how it works yet. But all the hardware hardware is here for that and for the pull pull cable on the retract tailwheel retract now these had me stumped when i first opened it up opened up the box and looked at it got these little plastic covers right here and uh you have to cut these out they look like scoops but they're not they actually cover the aileron horn and push rod they're basically an exit guide cover the little fake antenna that goes on the canopy like you've seen on my original one but what I did with mine <clears throat> is I sprayed it silver so it matches the plane these are black and then here are let's see if I can get them open I'll show you one these little plug looking things are the guns that go inside in the front of the leading edge of the wing you cut the material covering material away slide these in with a little epoxy there's a certain distance you have to measure and you glue them in but that's what they look like and I'll hold it like that okay put these back in the bag here I'm notorious for losing parts, so I got to put them away right away. Otherwise, they will disappear on me, and I won't know where in the heck they go or went. And when that happens, I have to call the wife down, and she comes and help me look for things that I've lost. Uh, clevises, an easy type connector, and some wood screws, sheet metal screws, for exactly what I'm not sure. They might be for... Uh, mounting the the cowling the the wood screws okay no they're not i'm not really sure what those wood screws are for uh i have to look those up but uh whatever they're for they're here these had me confused right off the bat these little plastic wedges they look like wedges but they are contoured on one side. They got two ears that go into the firewall and is rounded so it meets flush with the, can or the cowling. So these have to be installed onto the firewall 
so you can mount your cowling and there's two screw holes right up in here where the screws go into the firewall to hold these blocks on so that's really all they are is for mounting the cowling and there's how many here there's six of them and the screws are in the bag for these uh, tabs for the cowling these bolts here and washers are for mounting the retracts there's eight of them and eight sets of eight sets of washers lock washers and flat washers um, let's go to the cowling when you get the model the cowling sitting like this in the box it has this cardboard stopper on there and all this hardware is packed inside the cowling so it's not flopping around which is kind of cool my cowling um, the colors match the fuselage now the and the lines pretty much match the lines on the fuselage so you won't have a variation of height between um, the, the green color and the silver on the fuselage versus the cowling the paint has been improved before when you grab the cowling and gave it a little squish like this the paint would spiderweb with cracks and mine was cracked all over the place before I even got it onto the airplane but they fix that they put a flexible paint paint on there now so you can handle it without cracking it my cowling came pre <laughs> pre-warped right out of the box uh, not real happy about that but I should be able to repair that and make it flush so that's one strike against them on the cowling the second strike is right here I pulled it out of the box and my cowling is broke right here it snapped right off so I'm gonna have to repair that probably some CA glue or something for now but yeah that it's that was a disappointing thing to find the warp and the crack but the cowling is about the same not much difference except <laughs> here's the old cowling except mine is in more pieces that's what happened when your belly land it just tortured it uh, you can see that the way it's painted it has a layered gel coat over top of the paint or over top of the fiberglass so uh, and the, the shark's mouth is actually a decal or a sticker that they put on there and then they clear coat the whole thing that's basically how it's done all right the cowling's out of the way and the part that goes on the cowling are these little exhausts these exhausts will look like that when you put them on not much difference uh, this one's cut pretty nicely it's pretty flush this one I was a little disappointed is that they put a whoop de doo right here so this isn't straight anymore there's this great big loop in it so this is gonna have to go on the port side with this big hole in it facing down so another bad point somebody didn't take very much care in their job when they cut that out not a big deal but hey you you spend 400 and some odd bucks on a plane you expect something a little bit better than that uh, retracts major improvement they're electric retracts I have no way to operate them to show you but I can tell you about them uh, up in here and this green stuff there's the trunnion here and it is a lot beefier than on, than on the air retract the cylinder for the, the motor part is metal the framework is aluminum uh, the top strut is aluminum however the bottom strut is plastic not real thrilled about that uh, the shackles right here they're plastic the dog bones are plastic this head piece right here is plastic 
this piece is plastic and uh, you have a screw that holds the wheel on with a washer there two washers let's see I believe that this hex screw right here is the lock for the screw so it doesn't back out on you it just locks everything in place once you get it set and there's two of those so that's the new upgrade one of the new upgrades on the generation 2 second generation uh, p40 from Phoenix so there's one there and there's one still in the bag here I figured I didn't need to take it out and now the tail wheel electric tail wheel there are very few metal parts on this the motor that operates a retract is metal the screw jack deal is metal these standoffs are metal of course the screws and the nuts and down here is a centering spring which works pretty well but those are the only metal parts oh and the control horn up here for the tail wheel everything else is plastic it's lightweight I'm not sure how durable it is but we'll see um, the shock absorber is metal of course the rods are metal uh, let's see it looks okay I'd have preferred to see everything made out of aluminum but then the cost would probably go astronomical uh, it flexes quite a bit but the tail wheel doesn't carry a load unless the planes on the ground so that's one way to think about it and it shouldn't take any shock or as far as I know the only shock it'll get is when you do a three-point landing or when your tail comes down after you landed then it'll receive some shock and it looks fairly beefy where the plastic meets the hinge area here uh, how good it is I don't know I guess I'll find out after a few landings to see how well this uh, holds up and that is it as far as everything on the new P40 from Phoenix second generation there's one more thing I forgot to mention ah uh, I almost ended the video on that a little bit but uh, the decals the decals are nothing more than stickers uh, the blue on the stars is not the right shade but they work got the eyeballs up here which I'm going to change to look like those eyeballs I do is I paint my own on uh, the swastikas are not very good they're like half a swastika <laughs> um, you might want to considering finding another source for those but the rest of the decals are okay uh, there's not much more to say about the decal sheet except that it's fairly complete so on that note that covers everything that was in the box so uh, I guess that wraps it up for the the new p40 second generation from Phoenix models and uh, hopefully I'll be coming out with something pretty soon I'm still working on the Cougar if those of you who are watching this have seen the Cougar videos I stopped before the painting started um, a lot of things have happened and I kind of got delayed on that but I will be picking it up shortly so um, hopefully you'll stick around for that thanks for watching and uh, until next time have a good one